Welcome traders. In this video today, we're going to be talking about how to stack trades using supply and demand. In order to stack trades effectively, you must be able to identify breaks in structure, BOS, and change of characters, chalk. First of all, it's about becoming aware of break in structures, BOS. Here, for instance, price goes up. As soon as it breaks this high, we call this a break in structure, which means there's actually buying pressure to the upside. Price retraces and breaks to the upside again. Whenever there's breaks in structures, usually order blocks and imbalances are left behind. Here is a change of character or chalk. So a change of character is when we have a break in structure that changes the character of the trend. So for instance, we've got this uptrend. This would be the break in structure over here. Then another break in structure over here. But then the first break in structure to the downside that changes the deviation of the trend. We call that the chalk. Whenever there's a change in character or break in structure, usually there's an order block and an imbalance left behind. Bearish stacking sequence on the macro. So first of all, we go into a higher time frame. Here we are on the 30 minutes. And we look for a zone. So as you can see here, we have this supply zone and this massive drop. It breaks the structure, leaves behind an imbalance and an order block. And we select this order block, which becomes our supply zone. And that is the area we wait for price to come back to. And price moves all the way down and it comes up to tap into our zone. So this becomes the first stacking sequence on the macro. Then we have the process happen again, second stacking and third stacking. I'm going to zoom into each one and show you what we will do once we recognize these zones and price enters them. Whenever price comes into a zone, we always want to notice how it reacts to that zone. So for instance, we've got the 30 minute order block here. Price came up to the zone. Now, if we had to enter right then and there, that would have been an aggressive entry. And that is a little bit of a more risky entry. But what we do is we notice price is consolidating, creates this liquidity here. Then price breaks the structure up, comes down, breaks the structure down, and we have this change in character. And we know whenever there's a break in structure or change in character, it usually leaves behind an order block. So we go into the five minute, we select this five minute order block. And this order block, this zone, becomes our confirmation entry, which is a lot safer. This is our 30 minutes supply zone over here. Price comes up, it breaks the structure with massive momentum to the upside. It taps into this 30 minute order block. We could have entered right then, but that would have been an aggressive entry. It's more of a risky entry, but if we wanted a more safer entry, we would have waited for price to replicate the same move. So you can see it consolidates and then we have this change in character, which is what we're looking for. It leaves behind this imbalance and this supply zone, this nice order block. And this becomes the zone we look for for an entry. It's a much safer entry. It taps into the zone and it drops again. We get another break of structure and another supply zone is left behind. This is just a zoomed in version of the same thing. This is that 30 minute order block price taps in. Then we have this break in structure, leaves this zone. Price comes up, taps into that zone, and that would have been our confirmation entry. Then it breaks structure again. This massive break, you can see this very big institutional candle. Price breaks the structure, and the last candle before the imbalance is our bearish order block. This represents our supply zone. So we draw out this zone, and this is the zone we wait for price to come back to. Price comes all the way down, works its way all the way back up and taps back and mitigates this zone. Then we zoom in a little bit more to that zone and you can see price is tapped into the zone one, two, three times, four times over here. And these all could have been entries. Sometimes when price comes into the zone, we're not going to get a confirmation entry. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. As you can see, it tapped in here. We could have entered here. Then we saw this liquidity building up, which we knew price needed to break that liquidity. So we could have waited for price to break that liquidity and then enter the zone. Came down, created more liquidity here, which we know price is going to break. 
came back up, tapped into that zone, and then this massive move down, which took out the liquidity and created this massive change in character, which left behind this supply zone. And this would have been our confirmation entry over here. Then price continued to drop, we'd wait for price to come back into this zone to enter the move. And price bounced down, it does this like, price does this stair-stepping fashion. So you can see it dropped again, created another break in structure over here, left by another ore block, came back, tapped into that order block, then it consolidated, then we had this massive drop again, left behind another order block, price came up, tapped into it, came back down, created another break in structure, came back up, tapped into that same order block again, consolidated a little bit, then we had another big break in structure here, you see an order block was left behind, came back up to mitigate that zone, came back up to mitigate this zone, with a massive drop, we had another break in structure, and it left behind another supply zone, which it came and filled, and filled again. So can you see how price does this stair-stepping, and at each level, whenever there's a break in structure or a change of character, it leaves behind a supply zone, which becomes a great place to enter. Here's a zoomed up view of our entry point number three. So price comes up, hits this 30 minutes order block. And as you can see, it didn't leave behind a confirmation entry at this point. But we wait for price to break structure. It breaks structure to the downside. And now we can start looking for supply zones. Comes up again, breaks structure over here. This little area is the area I identified as a good zone. We marked out the zone, price bounced down, we waited for price to come back into the zone, and we have two entry points. Then price breaks this structure again, leaves behind another zone, comes down, taps into this demand zone over here, goes back up, taps into this supply zone, breaks structure again, taps into this demand zone. So you can see price loves to break structure, leave behind zones, and come back to mitigate them. This is how the banks are able to enter their large amounts into small pieces to make it easier and manageable in the market. Here is bearish stacking. So what we got is we've got these break structures to the upside, gets to the top. We see this liquidity or this consolidation. And usually what happens is price takes out the top of the liquidity to liquidate the sellers, takes out the bottom to liquidate the buyers. Then price drops down breaks the structure, fills this liquidity, and we have a change of character, which signifies to us that the trend is changing. And now we can start to become aware of the stair-stepping to the downside. We mark out the supply zone, we wait for price to come back, that becomes our entry. Then we get another break in structure. We wait for price to come back to that zone, we mark out that order block, and we take an entry here. We get another break in structure. Another order block and supply zone is left behind, wait for price to come back into that zone, and that becomes our entry. And then all of a sudden, price has this massive move and breaks above both these structures, which becomes the change in character to the upside. The key to making this process work is number one, identifying the change of character, followed by a momentum candle, imbalance, and order block. Number two, we want to identify the break in structures, followed by a momentum candle, imbalance, and order block. Number three, look for entries. Then what we want to do is, once we identify these changing characters and breaking structures, we want to go down to lower time frames and mark out the imbalances and order blocks as our zones. An important notice is that in order to stack trades correctly, you must be able to identify changing characters and break of structure. Train your mind to identify so that when you look at a chart, you can just pinpoint and spot them. These stacking patterns work exactly the same on both bullish and bearish scenarios. So this was the area we just went through right now. And you can see I dropped, we got in, we, there were multiple entry points here at all these different levels which we did cover. Then we had this massive up candle here which broke this whole structure to the upside, which signifies buying pressure and going into more of a bullish market scenario. And now that we know the market shifts, our bias has changed bullish. So now we start looking for bullish stacking opportunities, stair-stepping zone stacking on the bullish side of things. So number one, price broke the structure, left behind a zone, came back down, tapped into that zone. This would have been an entry. 
came back up, created liquidity up here, which we know it's going to break, came back down, tapped into that zone again, we could have entered again. Then price proceeded upwards, broke structure, leaving behind another zone on this break in structure. Wait for price to come back to the zone, and there we go, is another entry. Then price proceeds to move up with this massive institutional candle, breaks this whole structure here, leaves behind a zone, wait for price to come back in that zone, and becomes another entry. And it breaks the structure again. So can you see how it's doing the stair-stepping? We had one, two, three, four opportunities to enter into this move. Number two, this is the 30 minutes demand zone. Price is coming back in, tapping into this zone. That would have been a very aggressive entry, so we would have rather waited for a change of character or a break in structure. Price proceeded up. We finally got our change in character. It left behind this demand zone, but price did not come back into that zone, so we just waited. Price rallied, consolidated, rallied, and left behind another zone at this break in structure over here. As you can see, price did come back into that zone. This would have been an entry. Then it went up, broke structure again, left another zone. The price did not come back to that zone yet. But never mind, there were still many other opportunities. Price consolidated, created liquidity here, took out that liquidity, left a zone. We would have waited for price to come back into that zone. Would have been an entry right here. Break in structure again, leave behind a zone. When price comes back to the zone, we could have entered here or here. Then we had another break in structure left behind a zone and price came back to the zone again. This is the zoomed out look of that exact scenario. So these two demand zones, price did come back to them. These were the trades we stacked in the previous example. One, two, three, four, five opportunities to get into them. Then we had this major change in character over here. So we knew things were shifting to the downside. Wait for price to come back into our level. And this is where we could have been looking for another entry. As you can see, price tapped into it with this massive move, breaking all the structure, consolidating, and then dropping to the next zone, tapping into this zone and making its way up different kinds of zone entries. When price comes down to your zone, firstly, wait for price to hit your higher time frame zone. This is the 30 minute zone over here. Then go into a lower time frame to look for an entry. Instead of entering directly off the higher time frame zone, we wait to see the change in character on the lower time frame, such as the five minute for our entry. Price comes down and hits our zone. We could have entered on this zone, but it is more of a risky zone. So we wait, price bounces up, we have a first higher high, then we get this change in character and that's what we're looking for. It leaves behind a five minute order block and this becomes our confirmation and safe entry. Stacking trade strategy. Number one, wait for price to hit your higher time frame zone. Number two, wait for reaction on the lower time frame and change of characters. Number three, mark out the new zones. And number four, get ready to enter. Here is a pro tip. Stacking more positions as you trade helps you maximize the percentage of gains you can get from each setup. That is why it's so important to become aware of how to stack your trades in this way. Let's have a look at some examples on the chart. Here is an example of the Bitcoin chart. And as you can see, we were making this uptrend over here until we had this break in structure, which is actually a change of character. So we know the trend is changing when we see this. It leaves behind the supply zone over here with this massive institutional move. We've got all this liquidity here and we wait for price to come back to this zone. When price comes back to the zone, that is when we want to go to a five minutes or a lower time frame to look for a precise entry. This is our 30 minute zone over here. We can see price taps into the zone. We can enter on the zone and it is an aggressive entry, but it is more risky. So we wait for another break in structure and we see this break in structure over here. Break structure, it leaves behind another zone and this becomes our entry zone. Price comes back, taps into the zone, we enter and then it drops again. We get a break in structure over here leaves behind another nice zone. So we mark out this indecision candle over here. So we wait for price to come back into this zone. We could have entered right here as an aggressive entry, or we could have waited for another break in structure. As you can see, price came down. We did not get a break in structure yet. It tapped into the zone again, and again, creating liquidity, which we knew it had to take out. It breaks that liquidity over here. This could have been our entry on the break of this liquidity on this buy to sell candle over here, or we still could have waited for more confirmation. 
These entries here would have been aggressive entries and been risky entries, but as you can see, they both would have worked. If we had waited, we can see here we had this massive change in character, and this is where we get interested in a confirmation entry. It breaks the structure over here, leaves behind a lovely zone, bounces, comes back up into the zone, then breaks structure again. We would have waited for price to come back into the zone for a confirmation entry. Then we can see price comes down again, and we can see we get another break in structure over here. Price leaves behind another zone. We wait for price to come tap into that zone, and this would have been our confirmation entry. We have a big break in structure over here. Leaves behind another zone. Wait for price to come back into this zone and becomes another confirmation entry. So can you see how price does this stair stepping and we can stack our trades in this way. Key is to become aware of these changing characters, break of structures, alongside these massive momentum moves to the downside or upside. And it just repeats itself over and over again. So I hope you're all starting to see how we can enter into multiple trades by just becoming aware of changing characters, break of structures, and marking out our zones and then looking for confirmation entries.